Rosa returned to the lobby. It was still her turn to rest, but her expression made it look as though she didn't, could, didn't, couldn't sleep deeply with all this tension. どうしても夫と一緒に起きてる暮らしか、女らしいことができないから。本当に仲の良いことで。夏日さんこそね。エバと秀吉さんはぐっすり見たいじゃないか。やはり老座と違い、年には勝てんね。As the response to those words, the door to the hall clunked open. Ava and Hideyoshi returned from the guest room. よけいなお世話よ。あら、ローザ。もう休んでなくていいの姉さんこそ無理しないで休んでたら。なんだか寝つけなくてね。シャワーを浴びたら眠気が覚めちゃったわ。ルドルフたち、よかったら休んでいい
マリアが心配だわこういう時は感んを起こしやすいの At that moment, they heard the sound of wild footsteps coming from the second floor. The guest house wasn't a cheap building, so they wouldn't normally have heard the sounds of the footsteps. It was like the sound of someone stamping their feet in frustration. And an instant later, accompanied by what seemed like the sound of her running out, out from the second floor hallway, they could hear Maria calling ooh 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 over and over again, sounding displeased. Rosa grabbed her head, her hair flying, as she voicefully moaned in anguish. The adults con conscientiously turned their backs to her, pretending not to notice. The noisy clamor came from the second floor and flew into the lobby. It was Maria who was sobbing along with the other children and Nanjo. In other words, they all had come downstairs because of Maria's tantrum. Rosa couldn't hide her dizziness at this new annoyance her daughter was bringing to everyone. どうしたのマリア少し静かにしなさいみんな見てるわよ例のバラ庭園のマリアのバラあれが急に心配だと言い出して寝ぼけたみたいなんです急にガバッと起き出してバラが心配だバラが心配だって言い出してマリアちゃん落ち着いてそれは夢なんだよサンライズのトーンオブローズズボイスサプライズザチルドレンローザさん子供を頭ごなしに叱ってはいけませんぞこういう時は温かい牛乳などを与えると良いものです Without hiding her displeasure, Rosa grabbed the handbag that had been on the sofa and fished around for some medicine. It seemed she brought some child use sedatives for Maria's tantrums. She found and opened the bottle, but it must have been empty. Irritated, Rosa shook the bottle several times, but that didn't change the fact that there was nothing in there. As she did that, Maria's crying grew even more intense. At that time, Ava was lying on her bed, covered by the bedding. Hideyoshi returned from the washroom, folding a handkerchief soaked in water. <laughs> As Hideyoshi spoke to her kindly, she set the soaked handkerchief on Ava's burning forehead. Ava rested her own hand on top of his. わしの手が気持ちいいようじゃだいぶ熱が出とるな。安心せ。すぐに薬が効いてくるわ。それにな、わしの手は魔法の手なんや。こうしてエヴァの額に手を当てとるとな、どんな熱も立ちどころに治
Hideyoshi was about to say it when it was just a placebo effect, but he stopped. If Ava said she could feel magic coming from his hand, then that was fine for now. あんがいよの中にたくさんあるもんや。魔法が実在するなら、やっぱり魔女も実在するのかしら。ん森の魔女ベアトリーチェのことかいな。信じる者には居るやろな。神様と同じや。信心深い人の前にしか姿を現さん
ちょいと待っとれや静かにするようお願いしてくるわ早く戻ってきて大丈夫やこの部屋から出んてヒゲヨシ removed the chain and opened the door stuck his face out into the corridor He immediately met Rosa's gaze. Rosa Maria-chan,ごめんな. Maria's tone didn't change after Hideyoshi's request. She kept crying ooh ooh and repeating my rose, my rose. Rosa slapped Maria's cheek, lifted her up while covering her mouth, and dragged her towards the entrance, trying to at least put some distance between her and Hideyoshi's room. She would probably just be noisy for a while, but he had warned Rosa for the time being. Relying on Rosa's actions as a mother, Hideyoshi closed the door. <laughs> そうみたいやなローザさんも大変やそれを思えばうちのジョージはできすぎや親が感謝したいくらいやでそうねっておおすまんすまんほら魔法の手やで He put his hand on Ava's forehead again Maybe there really was magical power in that hand. A truly peaceful look rose to Rosa's face, and bit by bit, she began to drift off into the land of sleep. As he had promised, Hideyoshi kept his hand on her forehead. By the entrance, with her hand still against Maria's mouth, Rosa was at a loss of what to do next. She hadn't been able to withstand everyone's gazes in the lobby, and had yelled out at the children to go upstairs, dashing out of the lobby. Then she had gone to the corridor only to have Hideyoshi say that she was too noisy. Where should I go now? Where should I take this child who's having a tantrum? She felt as though, t she fought as th though tears of frustration were about to come out. As Maria kept struggling in an attempt to scream, Rosa put her mouth up to Maria's ear, and tried to persuade Mir Maria in, in a properly calm voice. Maria wa Maria nodded her head several times, moaning ooh ooh. Apparently, she was still upset about that marked rose from yesterday. Rosa felt her headache throbbing again. She was at least a little relieved that Maria had now stopped her screaming. Anyway, <sighs> Rosa reflexively covered Maria's mouth. She had spoken a little too harshly and gotten her agitated again. Rosa realized it was partly her own fault and clicked her tongue in self-hatred. Maria thought that it, that it was directed at her and her crying grew even fiercer. Suddenly, Maria stopped crying so fast that it seemed unnatural. Then she turned around and muttered. <sighs> A 
if it would keep Maria quiet for the time being. Rosa thought that even going out in this wind and rain would be a small price to pay. She thought it might be a bit reckless, but in the end, no murder or anything of the sort had actually occurred. All that clamor since this morning had been no farce set up by the Kinzo. If you carefully thought about that chain of closed rooms, it clearly had to all be an act. <laughs> Rosa didn't overlook that creepy laugh and lightly hit Maria with her fist. She then shrugged as though giving up. <laughs> Once again, Rosa tested the weight of her gun. It'll be okay. It's only an act. There was never a murderer on this island in the first place. ロザおばさんとマリアが第二の番の犠牲者なのかクソクソ誰か気づけよ呼び止めろ今の親父たちや俺たちは何をしてるんだロザ親子の痛々しい関係に気を使ってわざわざ話題を変えておるぞそなた
この手を離さないでお願いだから離さないで It was breathing wildly. Beads of sweat were appearing on her forehead. It certainly was true that she stayed up all night last night, and that things had been rough since early this morning. It wasn't odd that her body wasn't keeping up. Even though he understood that, Hideyoshi suspected that this sudden fever was a sign of some serious illness. Several times Hideyoshi decided to call for Dr. Nanjo, but Eva resisted firmly, pleading with him that saying that it was even more important that he didn't take his hand away. <sighs> お昼になったら必ず南條先生に見てもらうんやでそれを約束できるならずっとここにいてお前の手を握ったるからなこうしてギャルだなありがとう大丈夫よあなたの手の魔法で必ず。Even as she said that, Ava's harsh breathing didn't improve in the slightest. She saw an umbrella moving from beyond the rose bush. Rosa threw her umbrella and wildly lifted her gun. When she did, the shadow of the person beyond the bush showed itself. Oh, Eva Oba-san. Oh. Bikkurishita wa? Nae-san na no? Nani ka goyo? Saki no hanashi no tsuzuki na no? そうよ。お父様の黄金の話よ。お願いだからマリアの前では遠慮して、ちゃんと約束は守ってるわよ。姉さんの悪だくみの邪魔はしないわ。悪だくみ？何それ？姉さんが何を考えていても勝手よ。
してないいつも私たちの影に隠れてのらりくらりいつも戦わずに影から影へと逃げ回っていたお前に後宮家の黄金を無心する資格など本当にあると思ってるのあれは全て私のもの後宮家当主にして新しき黄金の魔女ベアトリーチェの名を継承した私だけのものベアトリーチェベアトリーチェだママベアトリーチェマリアはその子供を死ぬのに、マリアは彼女を死ぬのに、マリアは彼女を死ぬのに、マリアは彼女を死ぬのに、マリアは彼女を死ぬのに、マリアは彼女を死ぬあんた誰なのよベアトリーチェだとでも言うのそんなはずはないあんたは19年前に死んだのよええ確かに死んでいたわだって私あなたの頭が割れているところをはっきり見たものその中身が溢れ出しているのを昨日のことのように思い出せるそのあんたがどうして生きてここにいるのよ黄金の魔女に死の概念などないの黄金の魔女とベアトリーチェの名は永遠に受け継がれてるかお前が知っていたベアトリーチェは死を迎えたかもしれないが今やそれは私の名であるゆえに無限ベアトリーチェに死の概念はないの<笑>あの黄金に気が触れたとしか思えない哀れね姉さんもはや私はお前の姉ではないというのにさて新しきベアトリーチェとして自らの復活の儀式を引き継ぐわロノウェイ私はどうすればいいのご随意のままもはやベアトリーチェ様にはどのような思いも実現できる力が終わりです少し扱えばなれるでしょう不甲斐なき元妹よ私が魔女として初めて捧げる最初の生贄に選ばれたことを光栄に思うがいい第二の番に寄り添う二人を私がこの手で引き裂く First thing the new Beatrice wished for, no, the first magic she tried to use, was to surpass the limitations given to humans. In particular, gravity. She wanted to become fully aware of her transformation to a witch by being released from those shackles. As the witch and Rosa stayed as they were, the ground retreated all by itself into the distance below them. By now, their feet were no longer attached to the ground. Rosa finally realized that the earth wasn't retreating to the distance below them, but that she and the witch were being sucked up into the rainy sky. <gasps> For a human shackled to the ground by gravity, there was nothing more unnerving by having their feet stop sticking to the ground. Over to Beatrice, who, in becoming the new witch, had learned the joy of being released from gravity. It was enough to make her whole body shake with delight.
come dance with me in the vast rainy sky. Didn't we both wish we could fly like seagulls in the sky? And escape the cramped and boring island of Rokunjima? Now I'll make that dream a reality for you. I only want to share this joy with you, and no one else. fluttering around the whirlwind. As the rain pounded upon every part of their bodies, as lightning and cable shone upon them, they shook with joy of being released from the ground. However, it was only that way for the witch. Rosa was holding her head, voicelessly screaming over and over. Slightly displeased ex expression rose to the witch's face as she realized that her own joy was nothing to be not being shared. Then she decided to listen to her former sister's request. <laughs> the whirlwind that had been making Rosa dance around grew weaker than stopped. In other words, Rosa was once again bound to the restrictions of gravity as a human. Following the laws that were originally correct, Rosa began to descend towards the ground upside down. No, she began to fall. Which I didn't intend to send Rosa plummeting, but she still wasn't used to using magic. After plummeting about 100 meters into a rose bush, as a very, very natural result, Rosa died instantly. But the witch hadn't intended to kill her, so she wished that Rosa hadn't died. When she did, gold butterflies coiled around Rosa's body, reviving that life that the witch just, had just wished. Rosa's body, which should have been sp spread out like a carpet of fresh blood, rapidly returned to normal. The broken and crushed bones returned to normal. The torn and smashed flesh returned to normal. How easy it is to break things in the world, and how difficult it is to fix them. Anyone can take a life, but no human can revive a lost life. By surpassing the irreversible, one proves that they have surpassed humanity. This surely gave her a much, much greater realization of her position as a witch than flying through the sky had. もちろんです。ベアトリーチェ様はすでに無限の魔女であらせられます。生きることの質素と生かすことも殺すことも全ては無限に繰り返され、その輪廻を支配する女王こそが無限の魔女であられるベアトリーチェ様なのです。落としたことがあるわ。涼しげな美しい鉢が割れてしまって、二度と元に戻らなかった。床に叩きつけられて可愛いデメキューは二度と泳ぐ姿を見せてくれなかった。私がいくら泣いても使用人たちは壊れたもの
a while, the witch seemed intoxicated with how terrible and wonderful the power she had inherited was. Her life was pure, innocent, and cruel. <laughs> Even though Rosa had been revived, she allowed a cry of anguish at the pain from her fall. At that point, the witch had landed and held out her hand. What were those dreams you told me about when you were a kid? Go ahead and tell me all of them without holding back. As I am now, I can make anything come true, no matter how absurd. Even drowning you in a sea of jelly. Even ha having you get sucked into a mountain of cake. I can even make you sprout butterfly wings and flit around the gardens, okay? I'll do them one after another. Let's start with the ocean of jelly, alright? <laughs> Rosa was once again thrown high into the rainy sky. However, the sky wasn't filled with raindrops, but with drops of orange juice. When she looked down, Rosa had to doubt her eyes. The rose garden had disappeared, and the ground spread out below her like a pastel-colored jigsaw puzzle. There was an ocean of jelly, like the one she'd spoken of from her dreams when she was young. The black part was coffee jelly. The red was strawberry. The yellow was pineapple. And the green was melon. What was the white part? An apple? Did Rosa have the time to think of stuff like that? Rosa fell in towards that multicolored ocean. And she sunk deep into the purple grape flavored sea. It really was an ocean of jelly. It had no bottom. As Rosa sank, she was shocked to see a school of transparent fish swimming through the grape jelly ocean. They were probably made of grape skin. Then she sunk on and on, deeper and deeper, as deep as the Mariana Trench. Crushed by the water pressure of this jelly ocean, her ribs snapped as her si spine snapped. In the end, she became a small, frail meatball. <laughs> and I snapped my fingers, the meatball that had been Rosa was launched up into the sky. After being wrapped her in a golden sparkle, she returned to her original form. It was as simple as and easy as returning dried seaweed to its original form, and anyone could do it. If they were a witch. That absent-minded look on Rosa's face had to be the joy from having the dream that she gave up on as a child come true. Definitely. Probably. Next is the Mountain of Cake. In an instant, the sky was covered, and became black and white in the shape of a chessboard. That almost transparent white part was her favorite rare cheesecake. The elegant black part was a slightly bitter gâteau de chocolate. That became the ch ceiling, and became a mountain, and several billion cakes were uh, thrown down towards Rosa. If you piled those cakes up, they would surely be taller than Mount Everest. So they probably weighed... I'm not sure, too sure, but I bet it was heavier than all the cakes across Japan put together. fell down like a ceiling and swallowed Rosa up. So a very, very natural result, Rosa was crushed to death. In less than a second, her bones broke throughout her body and her insides were all smashed and forced out. Even so, an even greater number of cakes piled on top, and Rosa ended up as a layered jam wedged between them. She became as thin as a single hair, and probably spread out over the area of, the, of a tennis court. That world swallowed up by cake was once again absorbed by gold, a gold flash. Then, as though it had all been a dream, Rosa was revived once again. Of course, it definitely wasn't a dream. She had been revived after dying. By that point, death, which most humans only have to experience once after they are born, had already been experienced repeatedly by Rosa. 
In other words, she had gone through th that which humans cannot. The precious experience of dying more than once. Innocently, she pointed her gold staff at Rosa as she begged for mercy. When she did, Rosa glittered gold and rapidly began to shrink. She shrank down to the size of a real butterfly. Then gold wings sprouted from her back, and she joined her fellow gold butterflies. However, while a human body could withstand the wind, it was a different matter for a butterfly's body. The gold butterfly Rosa was invited to a dance by each gale of wind as she spun in circles around the rose garden. As her dance wore her out, she was caught by a gentle bed, in a soft-knit hammock in the shadows beneath the roof of the arbor. The owner of the hammock lovered in view, welcoming its rare guest who had wandered in, a, in on a night of storm. That owner, which should have been small enough to crush in the palm of her hand, now looked as big as the top of the canopy bed of, to Rosa. バトラには共感できないんだろうな。ああ、残念、残念。バトラだって。わらを認めればいつだって魔法を教えてやるぞ。人間の束縛を逃れた瞬間の喜びは必然に尽くしがたい。そなたに教えてやりたい。
ないよあの喜びあの感動そなたの生み出す魔法の世界もぜひ一度見てみたいものだ<笑>楽しくなってきただろう魔法が使いたくなってきただろう魔女もなかなかに楽しいものであるぞそなたには特別に教えてやる一緒に空を飛ぶ喜びとか一緒に海を潜る喜びとか人間の制約を超えた瞬間に知る世界がどれほどに広かったのかという感動をそなたにも教えてやる <laughs> There's no malice in Beato's expression. It was hard to believe, but she was genuinely enjoying this cruel show. And she wanted to share that appreciation with Battler. Battler was shocked by that hopelessly different sense of values. <laughs> Regalia shook her head apologetically. Her body had already been killed. Did that mean she couldn't interfere in any way? As Beatrice continued to look amused in an insane sort of way, Battle lifted her up by the collar and yelled at her. Yamero, Yamero, Yamero! 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 あれがエヴァおばさんだってのかありえない俺の知ってるエヴァおばさんは確かに意地悪なとこも少しはあったけどこんな残酷なことをする人じゃ断じてありえない全てお前の前貸しだ餃子おばさんをもてあそぶら
Even an exasperated look would probably have been better. Following Balor's lead, Regalia vanished into the darkness. Beato, who was now completely isolated and didn't have a clue what was going on, felt that they were making her out to be the bad guy. じゃないかよ。ちょっとは悪趣味かもしれないけど、割と面白いじゃないかよ。なあ、ロノウェ。あそこまで怒るほどじゃないよな。お嬢様の面白いが、マトロ様にも面白いとは限りません。いや、確かに対戦相手だから敵同士ではあるのさ。今日笑い合えぬほど、わらわたちは不仲だというのか。バトラと一緒に拍手できたように一緒にゲラゲラ笑い合えると思ったのに。程度のことすら笑わは拒
何をおっしゃいます先代様さっきロマウェイから聞きましたよ先代様の魔法はもっともっと素敵で残酷でやりたい放題だったって6人のお腹からお菓子が溢れ出すハロウィンパーティーなんて本当に素敵ならば私はアリスのお茶会を演出しようかしら何でもない日を祝うお茶会にみんなを招待して私が魔法で次々おもてなしするの先代様みたいに素敵にできるかしら個性的に残酷にポップにキュートにできるかしら今思うとおとぎ話とかってどれも残酷でしたよねそのおとぎ話の魔女に自らがなってみてようやく理解しましたうわっわらわもその以前までのは少しやりすぎたかなと少しは思っておるのだまあ黄金の魔女たるもの少しは気品があっても良いかと思うかなん先代様が何をおっしゃってるのか分かりませんでも一つだけ分かります今の私がどれほど尽くしても先代様の残酷さには到底及びませんもっともっと頑張らなくちゃもっと残酷になって立派な黄金の魔女にならなくちゃだからそれはもう十分だというにとにかくわらわの先代としての命令だ第二の番はもう十分だわらわが少し手本を見せる下がって見ておるはい先代様どんな無残で残酷でおぞましい殺し方を見せてくれるのか楽しみです The new witch grasped the sides of her skirt and gave a graceful bow, stepping back as an expectant gaze rose to her face. She was expecting an even more cruel magic that surpassed even herself. When Beta waved her pipe, seven colors of smoke poured out, reviving Rosa and Maria. Compared to how the new Beatrice had done a short while ago, it was slightly gentler. It's probably gentler than how Beato had done it herself up to now. Rosa's consciousness had already grown dim from the pain of so many repeated deaths. But even so, she pleaded with her that her daughter be spared. When Maria realized it was the real Beatrice, she jumped onto her. Give you a quiet sleep that will never be disturbed again. Beto embraced Maria with a loving expression on her face. 
and softly a red bruise appeared on Maria's neck. It was a very gentle bruise. Its redness grew bit by bit, and when it distinctly formed itself in the shape of a hand, Maria's neck til tilted suddenly, peacefully, as though she had fallen asleep. Beto softly, gently lifted her finger, as though touching the empty air in front of her nose. When she did, a light breeze lifted up, making Rose's body dance lightly like a feather. Then Rose's body floated softly, and right where... Right there was a garden fence with its spear shaped prongs. The spear of the fence uh, pierced Rose's medulla oblongata. Benevolently, without telling of her in a single blow, Rose's life was snapped out. Compared to the earlier innocent yet cruel events, it seemed to be over much too fast. It just looked like a doll shaped like Rosa leaning against the fence. But she had passed away. Ma. Ma. Beto acted proud, but the new witch wore a blank expression, almost though this was an anticlimax. Then she said it out loud. ロノウェイに聞いていた先代様のそれとは随分違います。そのだな。魔法は上品に使わねばな。あまりその品がないのはエレガントではないのだ。せっかく素敵なことが無限にできる魔法なのに。つまらない。これ愚痴るでない。
わらわが言いたいのは以上だもう引き上げてよいぞかしこまりましたそれでは失礼いたします失礼いたします<笑>まわらわが言いたいのはそれだけだそれでは引き続きしっかりな黄金の魔女らしく貫禄を持ってその自重気味にな頑張るがよいぞそなたを見守っておる Acting awkwardly until the very end, Beta left that message and immediately became a cloud of gold butterflies, hiding her form in the empty air. Maybe it'd be more accurate to say she vanished in a hurry because she couldn't keep up the conversation. After that, all that remained was Maria's corpse, lying down and pounded by the rain, Rosa's corpse, propped by the fence and staring up into the sky, and the figure of the witch. Her expression looked just a little bored. There was a popping sound. And that was probably her clicking her tongue. <laughs> Leaving that last sentence behind, she once again vanished into the empty air. <laughs> <laughs> 